acceptable to the divinity. They're not acceptable to ascension because you will not progress. Progression in the knowing. And not knowing for the sake of knowing. It's knowing for the sake of becoming. Knowing for the sake of um, improving. Knowledge. I mean, there's books. I've got you know, books everywhere. And you can just read them and everything and, and go out as an intellectual and say, oh, this is like this and this is like that and, and I know this and I know that as many people do. And um, it's, it's useless. Goodness sakes. How beneficial can that be? All right. Good night, Ruth. Uh, Deborah, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Thanks, everybody. And, uh, look, if anyone's all keen to keep going, I'm more than keen. <laughs> so, uh, Tash, I watched some Dean Clifford videos yesterday. Does that also apply to U.S. courts, and do you feel reclaiming dominion is essential to hermetics? Absolutely. It's one and the same thing. Absolutely. Because knowing thyself is knowing that you are so divine and you do not belong to the club of Rome. We do not. We are not Romans. We are not worldlings because we have this ancestry. We've discovered our heritage, our hermetic, spiritual, metaphysical heritage. We know that these elements here that are just motion belong to the earth. So we shall give it back to the earth. When our bodies expire, great. Bring on old age. Bring it on. Bring on the sine wave. You know, bring it on and we shall go forward. Forward and upward. You know, and that's that's what it means. Dominion is freedom. We are in our dominion. Genesis chapter one. Leave man behind the earth and dominion over it. Because we are the ones who are the heroes. We are the ones that can uh, can dominate the earth and make a garden out of it. Well, we were supposed to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, quite a few times. And the judges, no matter what you say and do, they want to steamroll you, and they do. And so, you know, the point is, though, um, uh, Big John, the point is um, we don't need to go to court. That's for them. That's their thing. We need to learn how to uh, avoid that because once you start contracting with them in their courts, they have control and, and they have... Um, what's the word? Um, when a court has jurisdiction over you. There's only one way of giving them jurisdiction, and that's interacting with them. Yeah. So studying up on Dean Clifford is good for freedom. I was on a radio show with him today on lifting the veil. Uh, sorry, no, he wasn't. We share it. We're on the same on the panel. Lifting the veil, if you get a chance. Okay, let's go with um, the courts yeah, need a different angle, but sovereignty is top below God. Yeah, they abide by the highest. Okay. Yeah, stay out of the courts all year. Use paperwork. Mm -mm. Absolutely. When they send you a summons, send it back. Don't recognize it. I do not recognize you, says Franco Collins. I don't recognize you, judge. I recognize you, prosecutor. Who are you? When did we have a contract? Can you show me a contract with wet ink? Who is the... Um, um, where are the facts? You know, where is the injured party? Where is the contract? These people are schemers. They are, they are evil schemers. The bankers. That's why they sit on the bench. They sit on the bank. Yeah, they have the upper hand. The moment you go to court, they've got the upper hand. But but you can still win in court. You don't lose, you never lose. Yes, we don't negotiate with terrorists. They are terrorists. They're terrorists because they are running the Inquisition. The Inquisition is run in our courts, in the lower courts especially, where there's no uh, jury and, and um, common law jurisdiction, where there's no, um, you know, 
republican form of law, real constitutional law and stuff like law of the land. It's law of the high seas and UCC and commercial law, which is fine if you know you're dealing with it. Most people don't. Yeah, get into Dominion. Please do. Um, Franco Collins and Dean, Dean Clifford are pretty much the best guys out there. They are, they're heroes for what they're doing. It all ties in with um, reclaiming dominion and, and um, knowing thyself. Yeah, Max Egan. Max Egan is, um, is uh, right on the money. Yeah. Uh, family law, um, in Australia, I know that it's a bit trickier. It's more dealing with crime. Um, but, yes, you can still deal with it and approach it the same way. You still uh, approach it, your paperwork and your affidavits and your, um, and your um, and that sort of thing. Uh, but the problem with this is that um, most situations are where husband and wife are fighting and, therefore, it's a different kind of an action. Act Accusation. It's not really contract law or commercial law. You know, it's that's that's uh, common law, really, isn't it? You see, so but you can still use your common law dominion and sovereignty principles. Um, yes, look. That's a good question about um, registering your children at birth and becoming property and wards of the state. Well, that's what they think. That's their premise. Everything is working on presumption. Their whole system works on presumption. So when they, they bring you into court and summons you, they're just uh, presuming that you're going to be stupid enough to, um, you know, go surety for that, um, for that corporate fiction. And, and there's no problem with going surety for corporate fiction as long as you know what you're doing. As long as you know that you are the grantor and um, executor or grantor and beneficiary of your trust, of your estate, or executor of your estate, and you have um, appointed yourself as the director. Once you've done that, you've trumped the prosecutor and the judge because they were going to do that. They were presuming that they could get away with it because you let them. You gave them jurisdiction and you said, Yes, my name is Toby Bonacci, Your Honour. And the, and the judge says, you are? Your name is Sam Bonacci. Oh, good. He's licking his lips. He's going, Judy, I'm going to, looks like I'm going to be cashing in my bonds and I'm going to get a good paycheck because this guy's going down. He's just attached himself as a dead man to that dead paper. So whatever we charge against that paper, he's going to go surety for it. He's going to, he's going to say, yep, yep. You no, know, I'm guilty. I'm not guilty. You know, uh, the moment you play, enter, you've contracted with them. You should be going into court with no plea. No plea, no plea, no plea. I plead to the facts. Where's the contract? Um, what are my feelings about pers uh, Alistair Crowley? Well, I've read uh, a few of his works and I have his tarot cards and whatnot and um, I, like Jimmy Page, believe he was a genius, but he... ...was no saint, okay? <laughs> I think if you want to be uh, a saint, had... Um, the occasion to spend a week with Alistair Crowley. And um, at the end of that week, he basically had to tell Alistair Crowley to leave. And um, he was disgusted with the man. And he said, uh, you are a dirty, filthy man, he called him. He said, I never want to see you again. And uh, I don't know whether he, the reasons why he treated Alistair Crowley in such a manner. Um, but certainly he was no saint. Now, which would you rather be, a saint and not a genius, or a genius and not a saint like Alistair Crowley. Well, in our evolution, it would be 
best if we balance the two, wouldn't it? You know, <laughs> grow our consciousness and our knowledge, but not be arrogant with what we know. Always be be uh, be humble and modest, and um, but but by the same token, growing our genius and then growing our sainthood. You know, that's. Mm, in the middle, that's the balance of Daoism, isn't it? The middle part. And I, and I find that there are a lot of people that are knowledgeable that are really, really possessed with an arrogance, a condescension, you know, a condescending manner, and um, aloofness. You see, they have a certain aloof, their intellect is superior, and they, and they sort of separate themselves, uh, you know, in that because they're academists and they've, um, they've got their PhDs and whatnot. Nothing wrong with those things. There's nothing wrong with reading, learning and everything like that, but it can be a trap if it's done for the sake, knowledge, the sake of knowledge. I'd love to be able to hear voices. One day I hope we can uh, we can do a ringing. How about we work on that, eh? Because I'd love to hear your voices and this would be fantastic. And, and it sounds like there's a lot, quite a lot of you that have got... Um, you know, good knowledge of things. I think we should be sharing at in future. Yeah, we can. Oh, can we do that now? Hey, come on, bring it on. I think that's superior to um. You know, anyone has a mic, hop on. Let's go. Uh, please allow me to have a um. A quick one minute. Um, we'll, we'll do we'll do questions with Mike. Hello. Hello. <laughs> that was me. You are now unmuted. Come on. Yeah. Hello, I heard someone. I heard someone. Big John, I heard you. Can uh, you hear me? Good. Now, do I need to unmute? Do I need to unmute? No. 